being Delulu is the Salulu. You've probably heard this advice everywhere and I get it. And to an extent, I actually agree with it. But sometimes some of us work in a more logical way. And some people like me need a bit of logic. Your brain actually needs evidence of real life experiences to truly rewire your brain, to truly rewire your thoughts, to actually believe the beliefs that you're trying to reprogram. And I also think the whole Delulu is a Salulu thing comes from a place of privilege. I would say I've had like a couple of pivotal points of really trying to change my life. The first time I did it, I was definitely in a place where the Delulu is a Salulu thing can really work. Like I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna pretend I'm a six figure business owner and make it happen. And then I made it happen. But I was also very comfortable. It wasn't the worst job in the world, paid very decent. I was good, like I was okay. But then the next time I tried to change it, was actually more recently and at that point the things that were really really bothering me were health things and family things and personally I couldn't do Lulu is the Salulu my way out of that because it's a skill set people don't talk about how it's actually a skill set to be able to like visualize when you can't see things and really get yourself into the mindset of the lifestyle you're trying to envision when your 3d reality is very different you've got a very vivid imagination if you've got really strong faith you're able to disconnect from 3d reality or if you're just in a place where things are not that bad but then there are times when your faith isn't so strong which was the case for me the second time i tried to recreate my life my imagination was not vivid i could see what was happening and i was scared okay so sometimes you need to work with logic rather than delulu sometimes you can combine the two but if you are of the logical side, here are some ways to work with logic when it comes to manifestation and changing your life. If there's a certain area you're trying to change and it looks like everyone else it's happening for, you're looking around like, oh, everyone's getting married, everyone's getting engaged, everyone's starting a business. I have to say to myself, if it's happening for everyone else, then why am I gonna be next? If everyone, if it's happening for everyone, am I not a person? If it's happening for everyone else, then why won't I be next? Like, I might as well be next. Or sometimes you have to lean into the stats when people say, okay, like 90% of businesses fail. Let's say in the US alone, there are like 6 million businesses. That's still 600K that haven't failed in the first few years. If 600K businesses have made it work, then why can't I be one of them? I've beaten stats before. A lot of us have beaten stats before. You need to realize stats, a lot of them are very outdated. Things have changed. Sometimes as well, like you have to really think about why the stats look like that. A lot of people's businesses fail because they just stopped wanting to do it. How many of us have changed our mind after three years? There was a period of time when I was learning how to trade and even though I was just like, this isn't for me, at least in this stage of life, there are lots of people that are literally making money out there trading and the internet will have you thinking that the only way to make money trading is by being a pyramid scheme, is by being a scammer, but no, people are legit making money just from trading. Yes, 90% of 99% of traders fail. That's because 90% of them join trading from these pyramid schemes that don't actually teach you. They just teach you how to recruit. So really getting rational with where these statistics are even coming from is something that really, really did help me. So the idea that our brain needs to work with evidence from our real life experiences, look at the stats we've beaten before, but also look at, look at the successes you've achieved before. Something I did with my life coach is developing my unique success DNA. So all the successes I've achieved, what are the common denominators I did to achieve those goals? Like for me, I've always gone in like a deep dive learning phase before I've really gone into something, but I never did it for too long. I did it for like a few days of like deep dive learning and then I just started to execute, execute. So looking at the success DNA you've done in the past, when you're looking at the, the success you're trying to create now, are you applying those same elements to the things you're doing now? If not, why not? When you've got, you've got a unique blueprint for yourself that has worked in the past on numerous occasions, then why aren't you doing it now? And even at the level of goals you've achieved before, sometimes we put these goals on a pedestal and it's like, you've achieved things that were just as hard, if not harder before. So it's like, you look at the goals you're trying to achieve now. Like for example, with me, I'm trying to create content. Sometimes I get really in my head about it. And I'm like, you started up a whole business with no knowledge. This isn't any different. So it's on the same level as something I've done before. But even if it wasn't on the same level, even if it was a above anything I've ever done before because with the business I've never done anything like that before. If I'm trying to create something new then I have to do something new. Like am I still behaving in the way I was behaving before and expecting something different? I'm trying to create a goal I've never had before but I'm still operating with the same routines, habits and mindset. That's when I was just like okay maybe you need to take it back a level and be the person. But you do have is a real thing be the person that has what you want to have and then you'll see something different. So I believe in the Bible. Everyone has their source of truth. For me, that is the Bible. There are so many promises in the Bible. I have to be careful with this because sometimes I have tried to like understand the logic of God too much and that can be stifling because God is never going to make complete sense to our human mind. However, I created a list of all the things that I believe that God had just really come through for me. So that those times where I felt like so alone, so disconnected from God, I can read back on this testimony list. I have it literally in my notes app 
separate list every year all the things that god has come through for me on so that i can always read back to those in those moments where i should start to feel like god doesn't want me all the time where god's promises just feel like some distant dream that i've just been sold i will look back and i'm like no god has shown up for me so many times and this is ah oh, that has helped me so much another list to create is all the times where you've been rejected or you've not gotten something that you wanted to get and you've been redirected to something better how many times in the past have you been disappointed at not getting that job disappointed at being broken up with disappointed at a friendship breakup how many times do you have something better waiting for you on the other side it might have taken longer than you hoped the pain of getting over the rejection might have been traumatic even but on the other side was something better sometimes you need those lists to go back because our brain we have confirmation bias rejection feeling heavy is normally coming from a place of like some self-worth some deep-rooted self-worth issues so if i just already feel like low about myself i'm going to think about all the times when i've been proven to not be good enough so i'm just going to think about all those rejections but i won't remind myself of hold on that rejection was actually a blessing in disguise sometimes we need to like remind ourselves of that if you truly think it's going to happen what is the rush the human brain says that everything has to be contained by time and matter even with every theory they've tried to come up with nothing can refute the fact that something has gone beyond time something has gone beyond matter so knowing that god is not a god that not only does he not operate in our time he does not operate in the field of time at all then why am i getting beat up over timelines this is a human mechanism of trying to rationalize a blessing that i believe that god is giving to me i just had to relinquish that need for things to happen now that need for rush because i definitely was that person i need to see growth i need to see change i need to see things happening now but things are happening things are working just because you can't see it god's time is not a time because god's time isn't time and yeah that is that is just really how i got through that season when i needed i needed some more logic I really did need some more logic and sometimes that sometimes that is you and don't beat yourself up don't think this the lulu thing isn't working for you like you're weird you're not weird you're just a human being and you're probably in a season where you need some rationalizing it makes it a lot more powerful when you're in that space of like no there's actually real logic behind this like when i tell you that i really feel like my best self is inevitable and i know that it might not look exactly like the goals i've set for myself but i'm just so okay with that because i realize i don't i don't have it all figured out i never have i never will it's just a process of clarification understanding yourself mapping things out making things make sense learning unlearning and i'm just working my way through that failing fast, failing forward, and just getting on with it. So I really hope you found that useful. Please let me know if you have any questions, video ideas, suggestions, and I will see you again soon. Bye.